Welcome back, everyone. We'll give a few moments for folks to come on in. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Hi, Amy. Hello. Greetings. And as I look at the deck, two groups didn't provide updates this time around, um, but I know that Tag Security is, is really going to want to be able to say things, so Emily, I might lean on you to be able to talk about um, the uh, security comment just happened. Yeah, of course, that's fine. Cool, I didn't think you might at all, but it was like the heads up, um, you know. Uh, I think they're all a little busy this week recovering from that, so, you know, good times. Should we get started? Yeah, we've got 20 folks here. We can rock and roll. So, okay. yeah, welcome, welcome. You have made it to the meeting. You are here or you're watching the recording, one of the two. <laughs> and this is my opportunity to be able to welcome in uh, our new members, Duffy and Nikita. So, yay. We have new people. Hooray, hooray. It's going to be fun. And uh, we also want to thank. Uh... Erin and Harry, yes. uh, outgoing members. Absolutely, and our emeritus members that are joining the, the illustrious group, people that have helped us out a lot. So, And welcome back to Dave and Kathy. <laughs> Perfect. All right, Dim's your meeting, rock and roll. Okay, so let's start with uh, tax storage. Uh, anybody here from tax storage? Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Hello, come on in. <laughs> okay, so uh, context storage, we had a cloud native PG project presented uh, last year. We're trying to bring them back for another presentation. And they were also applying for the sandbox project. Mm -hmm. uh, one initiative we have is that tech storage and the DOK community are collaborating on a white paper that describes the patterns of running data on Kubernetes, focusing on databases initially. Uh, we have been discussing it in the last few meetings, and we have a draft by paper outline. Uh, folks from the TAG and DOK have been discussing and providing feedback. Uh, we're also uh, working on building a use case template for the storage projects based on our CNCF storage landscape white paper. Uh, we will also be using information from our database uh, white paper that we're working on to fill in that uh, template. Uh, and uh, we got the, uh, the cloud native disaster recovery paper completed, published, and we still uh, need some work to do to finish the to finalize the performance by paper. So that's all from text storage. Uh, sounds good. Uh, let me can I ask you a couple of questions? Um, yeah. The cloud native PG uh, did they share uh, what was the issue last time when they applied and how they are doing better than now? Uh, they didn't really say there's any issues. I think they. Uh, last time when they presented, we have some follow-up questions okay. and they say they will come back. Uh, we just haven't uh, uh, set a time for them okay. to come back, but they, they say they will come back. Okay, so the, you are, yeah. you're going to set up a meeting and then they're going to uh, come and, okay, present. Yeah. Order. Okay, yeah. sounds good. Uh, the second one, I, I was, while, while you were seeing white papers uh, a few times, uh, oh. like how do we know that folks are looking at the white paper and it it's actually you know being used in the wild so to say mm -hmm. 
Uh, do we have any metrics or something? Yeah, that's actually a good question. So, uh, so I know that for the for those two white papers, the uh, the landscape white paper, uh, I did see someone send out some messages on LinkedIn saying, "Hey, this is a great paper." So, <laughs> some feedback. I'm not sure how to measure the metrics, and for the and also the other one, the cloud native disaster recovery. Yeah. Uh, there are a few people who actually asked me about that paper, so okay. I know that paper. Uh, right. It was read by people. <laughs> I'm not sure if there is a better way of uh, measuring. You know. Uh, uh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we should ask Amy. Amy, uh, is there a way we can like? publicize these and uh, you know uh, get some download statistics or something right we don't want to be a link to the wide so to say no i totally get that i'm, I'm kind of struggling a little bit in terms of like the what would be a meaningful metric and, and how would we capture that and downloads is one way to be able to do it but emily you had a hand yeah so i would re highly recommend coordinating with the um, cncf to formulate blog posts around these so that will drive both visibility because there's a lot of folks that walk, watch the blog posts and sending them out to the TOC public mailing list so that you get more visibility and awareness through that channel. Um, we've often in the past when tax security does papers, we've also leveraged our Twitter account so you can coordinate with CNCF on getting a retweet of that paper going out as well as on LinkedIn as well. So there's a couple of different things for the blog post. I would recommend filing an issue with the service desk to go ahead and get that started. Um, beyond that, I think those are really good high visibility platforms for elevating this and kind of getting that content out there. As far as confirming the metrics for who's accessing that content, as long as your content is stored within the GitHub repo, there are some metrics in GitHub about how that page is being accessed and where it's coming from. So you can actually see who's been looking at that information. Yeah, so basically what we are saying is, uh, let's try to do some post activities after mm -hmm. the white papers are launched. Maybe okay. we could write it down so uh, it'll be useful for both uh, tax storage as well as uh, other folks. All the uh, yeah, all the time. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's such a good idea. Yeah. We should do that. Yeah. But yeah, we just have been uh, discussing that, uh, presenting that at, at KubeCon, but we have not done blog posts or even LinkedIn, Twitter. We haven't done that. So. Great idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chat GPT, Ricardo. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Okay. Uh, anything else? Uh, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> but the, I think the information they have is a little old. I think it's by, uh, it's like 2021. That's the <laughs> last day what they have. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anything else, Shink? Or uh, That's it. Okay, can we go to the next one? I've Which... skipped the uh, um, security slide. So runtime okay. will be up in, in a moment, but I'm gonna pass to Emily to be able to yeah. chat a little bit about the security uh, tag. Yep, um, so the, everyone is in full recovery from Cloud Native Security Con, which happened in Seattle last week. For those of you that were able to join us, thank you so much. We appreciate your attendance. For those of you that couldn't make it, we hope you were able to stream the live keynotes. Um, everything was fantastic. We had excellent, excellent feedback from attendees. Um, a lot of the uh, responses and feedback we received were that the content was more uh, it was significantly deeper and more enriching to their work. Um, in some cases, they, uh, the, it was suggested that like, while the security track at KubeCon provides a great first level of information for individuals in a domain specific space like security looking for that additional content, um, having that dedicated event just to focus on those has been extremely beneficial for them. Attendees walked away with a lot of really good technical, technically deep discussions. Um, there was great feedback about the size of the conference as well. It wasn't too big. It was a good size. People were able to network and communicate with each other um, effectively and actually meet new peers. So at overall, smashing success across the board, I would say. Sounds good. Couple of questions for you, Emily. So did you have the team dinner and how many people showed up? 
Uh, so tag security was actually able to hold a dinner like they used to pre pandemic, they had a ton of people show up they're working on I believe updating the repo for those meetups with that picture but it was a very, very large table of community members that were able to meet and, and in person and talk about how how they've been enjoying the conference. Nice. That was one PR that I kept <laughs> you know, getting feedback notifications on, I want to join, I want to join kind of thing. So that's why I was curious. Um, the other one was, do you see this as a pattern that we can replicate with other uh, I do. Um, and and we've been talking about this a lot within both uh, KubeCon um, co-chairs as well as with Tag Security about how what is the next iteration of, of the colo into the standalone event while still providing that same level of content within KubeCon. Um, so what right now is going on is we're exploring the creation of a security village um, within KubeCon proper is like a, a mini conference within the primary conference itself. If this model is successful, I believe that other additional technical domains can follow suit in creation of those specialized villages within KubeCon to really drive attendees to those more advanced topics of information that are really centered around like storage or networking or runtime or app delivery. Um, I think that I think we have a high likelihood of that being successful, but we do need to try things out and figure out how it'll work. Um, the village will first show up in EU, as I understand it. And then from there, we'll figure out how it's going to look for North America. But this is all like very much in flux. Discussions are still going on live, so I don't want to commit anybody to anything, but we're looking at how we can uh, make this work across the board. Uh, so Amy, um... CNCF was involved in this, um, right? And uh, oh yes, with, yeah, yes, okay. yes, yes. This this was a cloud native security con. Right. Yes. Okay. So um, if any of the other SIGs, uh, other tags want to do this, then the the process would be you know reach out to you all and uh, get get the ball rolling. Yeah, I think so. I mean, part of it is sort of like the the security tag has had so much history and so much like, you know, pieces coming together that I'm not sure if we have like a process yet to be able to replicate it. But yeah, if you're interested, we can we can look towards what would be possible. Okay, sounds so, good. Yeah, I, I, I'm asking because I, I know mm -hmm. in uh, SIG storage, um, mm -hmm. pre pandemic in, in the Kubernetes uh, side of things, uh, they used to have like two day, uh, you know, everybody shows up uh, somewhere in um, uh, in the valley uh, kind of uh, thing. So uh, maybe it's time to revive something like that, Shing. <laughs> yeah, we have not had that for a long time. Um, even for the, the KubeCon, we just don't have the amount of people that we used to have. Uh, okay. Yeah, so we'll see. At least last time we didn't really get the critical mass. Okay. For, yeah, for a meetup. Yeah, it's yeah. a good goal to work towards. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, yeah. I'll see, yeah. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe we should talk about this one. We'll see how many people <laughs> will be there. Sounds yeah. good. Thank you. <laughs> We've got plenty of time. I mean, we don't have plenty of time for, for everything, but we can we can work towards, like, being able to have a group. group yeah, we could have a small yeah. one if, uh, you know, if we can't have, a, like, a, as big as what we had before, but we could have a small meetup. Yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, Duffy and Nikita jump in any time. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to be the only one talking either. Uh, so uh, these are run. informal and fun. This is our tag update meeting. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, tag run time. So D Nikita is going to provide the, the update. She's been working. <laughs> Do have <laughs> Nikita. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so like for tag runtime, uh, we've had a couple of projects present at our meetings and there's also been some great progress happening in our working group activities. Uh, so talking about the projects, we've had presentations from Go and Capsule. So if you're not familiar with Go, it helps you build uh, container images from Go programs and pushes them to container registries. So the interesting part is that it does all of this without like requiring you to write a Docker file or even installing Docker itself on your machine. And uh, it's also been recently accepted into the CNC sandbox. Um, so some things that we talked about then were about expanding the pool of contributors uh, and things on their roadmap, like publishing case studies, adding support for signing images, and adding some more ecosystem integration. 
Uh, so moving over to Capsule, uh, the presentation and demo were awesome. I recommend really like, checking out the meeting recording. Uh, we're also like, pretty impressed by the project. So essentially what Capsule does is it provides a multi-tenant environment for Kubernetes. So it has this abstraction called a tenant, uh, which is basically a grouping of Kubernetes namespaces. And within each tenant, uh, users are free to create their namespaces and share all the assigned resources. So uh, one thing that was really nice from the meeting was that they also invited an end user from a gaming company, if I recall correctly, who had been using this in production successfully to share their experience. Uh, and actually, so like the end user has also been contributing to the project, which was also pretty cool to see. Uh, they wanted to consider applying to the CNCF sandbox. So we gave them a rundown of the process. Uh, their contributions seem to be mostly from a single company. So we also suggested that they expand their first like, pool of contributors, interact with the multi-tenancy working group in Kubernetes, uh, and especially the hierarchical namespaces project within that working group. Um, we also have a few more projects in our pipeline for our next meetings, including Flatcar, who have also recently applied for incubation. Uh, in fact, actually the project interest has been so great lately that we've also had to schedule a few additional meetings compared to our regular students. Uh, so like, that's been really nice to see. Good problem to have. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so moving over to working group activities. Uh, so the IoT Edge working group published the first edition of the Edge Native Applications Principles White Paper, uh, which, as the name suggests, it lists down a set of principles for being Edge Native. Uh, and it also took it a step further by using these principles to consolidate an Edge landscape. This is a work in progress currently, but I think we already have like 136 projects on there. Uh, it was also nice to see a shout out to this working group with notes on how folks can actually get involved in this uh, working group itself. Uh, from a present in a presentation from I think an engineer from Sony uh, that was in the Alibaba Cloud Developer Summit in Jan. And similar to what the Edge working group is doing, we also have the Batch working group that's going to be putting out uh, one pager to mainly lay out the main tools in the CNCF batch landscape today. I think they're going to just get started with it, uh, but that's the main goal. And on the CDI, that is the container device interface side of things, um, there were some improvements made to the dynamic resource allocation cap for Kubernetes 127. And this feature essentially uses CDI under the hood to do its device injection. So the improvements mainly centered around uh, like passing information about CDI devices more efficiently. And for this reason, the CRI is now extended to accept CDI devices directly. Uh, there's also been discussion about CDI support for Docker. So this was discussed in the movies uh, maintainer call, I think last week or I think the week before. And the working group members are now working with movie maintainers to figure out what uh, Docker engine changes would be required to enable the support. Uh, we also submitted a session for KubeCon Amsterdam, and I guess it's probably okay to share this here because it's a small group, but we got accepted. So I'm looking forward to the session and conference. Uh, yeah, that's kind of it for tagline time. Uh, sounds good. Um, so the CDI, is it already there in container D? Yes. So okay. port and container D. Okay. Uh, sounds good. Uh, the other question that, uh, like, there seem to be a bunch of multi-tenancy stuff uh, popping up. It would be good to, write do a one-pager or a white paper, uh, you know, whatever you've been doing for other uh, areas. Uh, do that for uh, multi-tenancy and try to get folks from the project, like Capsule, V Cluster, and those kinds of things, and, like, get, get them together and figure out like okay who's doing what what works what doesn't work or things like that uh, do you think that that would be a good good thing to do go do yeah i think that sounds like a good idea yeah i think i think it's a great idea i mean the capsule team seemed pretty interested in uh in growing the ecosystem and, and i think they're thinking about applying for incubations so i think we can reach out to them and and see if they're interested in, you know, driving a white paper and, and maybe uh, reaching out to other projects and see if they're interested. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, any other questions from TOC folks or anybody else on the call? Yeah, I, I have a, a suggestion. I think this, this, this uh, workflows, OS, this project, 
uh, uh, you know, for example, for the confidential computing with Wasm, it's very interesting. There's a, there are a lot of you know initiative on that side. Um, yeah, if we can consolidate those efforts, um, that would be great. You know, uh, so I think uh, like white paper or some introduction about each of these projects to promote. Um, you know, the visibility so that other contributors working in the same areas can join. That would be good. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I like Kathy's suggestion because I think it is very useful, especially as a blog post, because Wasm is such an, you know, um, area where a lot of teams are working on it. Uh, also, a lot of, you know, different projects, right? So, uh, again, you know, having that uh, comparison available in a uh, searchable format is always helpful. Yeah, and, and I think there's some other projects in the CNCF that are in the WASM ecosystem, so we can also reach out to them. Uh, Justin, have you been following uh, the confidential computing as such, not the WASM side? Uh, is there any other uh, recent activities or something that folks are doing? Well, I, actually, the most recent thing is that Profi and the company that's sponsoring you know, Enox has just shut down. Okay. Uh, so um, I'm, but um, yeah, I mean, there is a bunch of other stuff going on, um, but yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there. I need to catch up with some people. It just happened a couple of days ago. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Um, let's go on to the next one. Observability. Hi. All right. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, good morning. Uh, we had uh, some some amount of activity, you know, during the uh, first couple of months here. Um, and uh, just wanted to kind of call out what's in progress. A couple of exciting initiatives that have picked up steam. Uh, this is based on uh, the first initiative, which was the Observability Query Standard Workgroup. That has been actually a hot topic for a few, quite a few months now. And uh, there was a lot of good conversation and discussion around uh, the need for a query standard, you know, as uh, different uh, vendors build their own query standards and or query languages and DSLs and roll them out. Uh, really the fragmentation that is felt at the end user um, level, right? And, and um, a work group has been proposed uh, in the uh, in the tag observability uh, area where you know we are encouraging um, different folks who had actually had a quite an in-depth discussion at KubeCon uh, in Detroit uh, leading up to actually making a proposal for an initial uh, uh, you know scope as well as a charter. So that's ongoing. That's uh, really exciting to see that initiative pick up uh, eBay as well as Netflix have been uh, maintainers from you know, these two um, core you know, uh, end users have been leading this discussion um, and uh, looking forward to kind of driving that uh, and perhaps you know, actually spinning it off as a work group. So that discussion is ongoing and there's also a proposal available. So exciting. We decided as a community, as an observability community across projects to kind of keep it at the tag level because again, um, and reference spec could be suggested from such a work group and then implementation could be you know, easily uh, embedded in uh, open telemetry or other projects you know, who I, which are really working closely. Um, so that's the update on that. Uh, Matt, did you want to give an update quickly on the land growth of the landscape graph uh, project? Sure. Um, so the this project I've spoken about last summer uh, when we kind of conceptualized it and proved out some concepts. Um, uh, it's it's been dormant for a quarter or two, but uh, in, later this month uh, we intend to open the door to contribution and start having project meetings for anyone interested. Um, I'll speak to it a little bit in today's tag meeting, but I don't want to spend a ton of time. There's some links there for those that are interested. Uh, in short, it takes the data behind the landscape and builds a labeled property graph so that we can use graph analysis techniques um, 
uh, versus more rectangular uh, relational, if you will, uh, techniques. Um, so that that's happening. Um, there's a work group that's the Kubernetes Observability uh, Work Group or Observe K8s. Um, that group uh, will have an update uh, in next month's TOC meeting, uh, but the TLDR is um, uh, it remains to be seen uh, what the end endpoint of this is. Sort of in parallel, there's the Open Telemetry uh, demo application uh, stack, which really um, uh, the K Observe K8s had an earlier fork of. So we we might actually roll changes there, uh, but we'll go back to Open Telemetry. Um, and call it a day, or perhaps leave something more permanent in place, but uh, we'll have an update next month. Um, I did want to just mention that um, tell all your friends, um, if you have case studies or end user sort of stories um, or experiences uh, using observability tooling or open source projects within the CNCF or otherwise, um, uh, please uh, 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 send us a message, look us up, we're friendly. Um, uh, case in point, in today's a tag observability meeting, which immediately follows TOC meeting here. Uh, we have VJ Samuel from eBay. Uh, Alalita lined this up a long time ago, but he's uh, talking about how and why eBay pivoted to open telemetry. There's a blog post from a few months ago. It's actually a really cool story that's a good blend of business and technical uh, and, and highlights why Otel is gaining adoption at the rates we've been seeing, which is uh, <laughs> uh, great uh, uh, for the project. Um, on the 14th, this is still pending, uh, uh, but Ryan Wright from Quine, uh, if you're not familiar with Quine, in a nutshell, it's a streaming graph interpreter, um, which is kind of a new thing. It's an MIT licensed project that's the, the result of seven to eight years of DARPA funded research uh, into uh, basically something that can work in streaming pipelines uh, and read a bunch of little things. Uh, and then <laughs> at the other side, uh, have more interesting correlated aggregated things. But Unlike a lot of existing solutions that use a timing window, you know, and, and you only have that uh, it uses a stateful graph um, um, uh, atop a number of stores uh, to do that. So you effectively don't have a timing window anymore. So it's quite good for a lot of observability use cases. Um, uh, we posit. <laughs> and so he'll come to uh, give a talk, hopefully, about that project. Um, uh, yeah, so that's kind of what's on the immediate agenda for, for the tag. Um, now, do you want to finish out on the KubeCon stuff? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. And then thanks, Matt. I mean, again, just wanted to highlight that our uh, speaker series has been pretty successful. You know, again, just engaging as well as pulling in uh, different, uh, you know, case studies from the end user world as well as from actual uh, project uh, subject matter experts from non and maintainers from different projects in the observability space. Uh, there's also a lot of energy, you know, in in specific topics uh, such as uh, cost management, uh, you know, leveraging observability uh, techniques. So again, uh, you know, all these talks are recorded. It might be worth, you know, kind of uh, leveraging some of these for a special series that is available and tagged on our YouTube uh, channel. The uh, wanted to call out the KubeCon uh, planning because I think that there's a fair bit of excitement around um, the observability day, which again, super, uh, you know, happy to see a convergence of uh, multiple, you know, events kind of happening, uh, converging into one day because it, it really enables all the projects to work together as well as the larger community to really um, converge together. Uh, again, every project has made a significant effort uh, to, uh, again, reiterate the call for, call for proposals and uh, the observability track also is kind of enriched from uh, a lot of the activity in this, you know, around the observability day. So looking forward to kind of having that um, energy at EU, at KubeCon EU. And also the maintainer track where we do plan to, you know, again, have a set of discussions around uh, some of the key topics that have uh, been important to uh, all the uh, different maintainers as well as uh, uh, end users who participate. And uh, just to wrap it up, again, I'm sorry we're running a bit late, but um, 
I wanted to call out, you know, again, how do we better communicate with the TOC? Because I think that there's a lot of activity that is happening on the projects, you know, both um, innovative features as well as, um, you know, var various projects going through different phases of growth uh, as from a contributor standpoint. But um, I think that it would be useful to have a more um, formal mechanism of communicating with the TOC in some amount of detail on these projects, because um, often, you know, there is a lot of interest from different uh, community members who want to participate in the TAG, but uh, don't necessarily have a process for participation other than just joining in and attending. Um, again, totally understand that it is, you know, as much as uh, uh, what people want to contribute to and how people get involved, but it's also encouraging folks, you know, with a clear process, if uh, folks want to become tech leads or co-chairs, you know, again, having some of that process established uh, and published would be useful. So really working closely with the TOC to define at least some criteria, which, you know, then the larger projects and communities can uh, leverage to, to get more involved. So wanted to call that out because I think we'd like to have a more detailed conversation about, you know, how do we actually leverage perhaps even contributor strategy, uh, the tag, uh, you know, experts there as well as the TOC itself to get some guidance. Alalita, if you could, right, you, you talked about a lot of different areas that I think we've discussed in the past with the tag chairs as well as with the TOC at, at previous KubeCons. If you could write down a couple of those points mm -hmm. and send that to the TOC mailing list, that way we, we have some form of documentation around them because I believe we already have an open issue on talk and tag communication and better partnership there. Or, yep, Dems, an issue would actually probably yeah, be better. That, that's great, that's great. That's a great suggestion, Emily. Happy to do that. And uh, again, you know, we can absolutely, if that's an easy way to do it, absolutely, that's great. Yeah, I mean, I would, I, issues would be great to have. File the issue, <laughs> that way we have something we can work off um, in the open on February 20th. 21st Wonderful. when we have that meeting. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's a good yeah, suggestion. I'm really hoping Thank that you. one stays because February 21st, <laughs> I want to get all of the chairs together and the TOC members to be able to come talk about this. Uh, and separately, right. the TOC liaisons are about to shake up because we've got a new TOC. So, um, oh, fantastic. Exactly. Thank you. Like, it's Thank perfect you timing Andy. for all of this. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and um, if, you, if you need like ongoing <clears throat> engagement with the TOC, we should figure out like what shape or form it takes. Uh, because we need to scale as well. Uh, so far, we've been trying to do like, hey, here are two liaisons uh, you can yes. talk to. But I don't know if that is working yeah. as well at this point. In fact, in fact, there's an issue. I don't know if you've seen it on the at least the tags uh, observability side where folks are have raised the question, who is our liaison on the TOC? Uh, yeah, it is documented. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. yeah. yeah um, so uh, oh. just speaking to the to the need uh you know just just to just to be clear that we've seen obviously the explosive growth in the open source project you know the number of them over yep. the last yep. several years right now we see the vendor ecosystem leveraging those projects yep. to bring various open source based you know cncf open source based projects to market uh in that you know in in this whole ecosystem so now we're going to see another uh you know iter, iter, iteration and so as that happens um, just to be, we'll put this in the GitHub issues, but what level of technical interplay do you, or interchange do you want to have between not just tag observability, but other tags are in similar situation? Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. absolutely. I, so, I totally get it. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, there's also one thing I forgot to put, we forgot to put on the slide and I just didn't want to lose, to lose sight of it. And that's um, the, the effort to add profiling, continuous profiling or profiling reports as a formal signal type to open telemetry, uh, which, um, We've reported on it in past months. That that remains ongoing. It's transitioned to a more technical implementation focused discussion in open telemetry itself within that umbrella now that it's a formalized work stream there. Um, and so open telemetry will be reporting out on it, but we can continue to give updates in the future. But but that is still successfully ongoing. Yeah, that's a good call out, Matt. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, I think I would like to say I like the idea of, you know, the tag uh, defining some um 
um, criteria or some governance, uh, you know, how to ramp up new contributors, right? So how to how they can become, you know, reviewers or lead or chair mm -hmm. or something like that. I think that's a that's a good thing, you know, to do. Uh, I can also uh, if you have some ideas, you know, uh, we can help together. We can awesome, help. awesome. Yeah, yeah, I do. I look forward to that conversation in a few weeks. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Yeah. Thank uh, you, Amy. Uh, also, please review uh, what is already there in Six Security. I, I think. Tax security, I think Emily always talks about. We've done it before, uh, follow our lead kind of thing. So uh, take a look at that also. So we we can have a good conversation there. Awesome. Yeah, Dems, that's, that's a great suggestion. Thank you. Uh, I did have one other question. Um, uh, there was uh, some issue around uh, one of the vendors having some uh, trouble with a PR uh, from yes. somebody yeah. else. Yeah. Uh, did that get resolved or, you know? Yeah, that was that was resolved. And uh, again, uh, the open telemetry project uh, GC does plan to uh, meet around, you know, uh, having guidelines from the CNCF to kind of handle, you know, different um, inter-vendor, you know, conversations or uh, in public, because I think that, you know, at some point, the project itself uh, is focused on the technical aspects, right? And, and really when there are inter-vendor, you know, discussions or, you know, some kind of, um, which shows up and influences the project, uh, it is something where we would love to have the CNCF, uh, you know, press um, liaison, for example, to kind of uh, help in there because, uh, again, there were a you know, a couple of reporters who reached out uh, and kind of pressurized some of the maintainers to make statements. So um, it is something that I think needs to have, again, uh, the same kind of communication where there is a clear guideline that, hey, projects can reach out to press, uh, you know, the press liaison, and this is what you would do. So we are putting together some guidelines on the open telemetry side to be able to work with Ciencia and Amy, just a heads up, I think if if folks haven't reached out to you, we will be, <laughs> so. <laughs> just so you know, we were all watching it, right? <laughs> so, and we were waiting for, to see uh, if you can resolve it within uh, the tag or you would come to us. Uh, and, you know, we are wait, wait, we are waiting uh, for that. But <laughs> okay. I'm glad it got sorted out, but yes, yes. I, I think it took some time and some effort from all of you to like get every everything uh, in a line. Um, but yes, I agree with you. We should have a little bit more uh, set of things that we need to, uh, so next time when this happens, we are better prepared for it. Yes, and and you know, again, these kind of things can happen, right? Because there are, uh, and it's CNCF is, uh, um, you know, uh, has a amazing set of contributors, you know, coming in from the different, uh, yeah. members of the industry, but also uh, they are competitors often. And, yeah. and uh, you know, it is something that uh, where we really don't want our projects to be affected yeah. by, uh, you know, that kind of an interaction. So right. having and some clear guidelines there and perhaps, you know, having some clear process, even if it is, hey, you know, just reach out to this email ID and reach out to CNCF's press, you know, team. Okay. Would be uh, so. Let's uh, uh, log this as another uh, issue, uh, and yeah. so we can talk about it. <laughs> okay. Sure, sure. Thanks. Tim. How much time we have? But yeah, we'll we have to try twenty first. We'll see what we can do. Yes. All right. Awesome. <laughs> Dims, thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> oh, sounds good. Thank you. Uh, next one, please. Tag network. All right. Well, we've we've been struggling a bit for um, agenda. Um, for a little while, uh, then we've got a potential upcoming presentation from Slime, and I actually don't know if they ended up submitting sent to Sandbox or not. But that was to be a Sandbox um, presentation. I, have, I haven't seen it go by yet. Uh, okay, okay. Um, then I'll reach out to them to get them to get them hooked in. <clears throat> um, they're an, an interesting project. Um, we do have an upcoming agenda, um, a project update from Network Service Mesh, which um, I think will focus on the fact that, that that service mesh can run as a foundation for other service meshes. And so uh, Ed 
Warnicke should be presenting there. Um, while we've had trouble with some of the agenda over the last couple of months, one thing that's been um, a consistent effort has been, well, it has been um, this concept of uh, the cloud native playground. It's actually one of the first, um, for, for me personally, one of the first ways in which I got involved with the CNCF with, um, was with Dan Kahn actually was commissioned by him to help create a, well, the, uh, back then I think it was just called demo, the CNCF demo. And it was to try to get Kubernetes and Prometheus um, stood up in a, in a scriptable way um, such that people, you know, the users could get familiar with Kubernetes and Prometheus as the first two, uh, as the first two projects inside of this demo. And, and so like carrying along in that same vein, this, this cloud native playground is something that I wanted to raise up today as, as an, an initiative from the Meshery project um, that I wanted to get some visibility to um, TOC members, maybe see um, how much you all feel like this makes sense that um, other projects might want to participate in this. The cloud native playground, this concept is that, well, in a, in a visual and collaborative way, there would be um, a way of designing your, your infrastructure, your cloud native infrastructure. And so this playground is um, yet to be launched, um, but the, the hope is that there will be a, a set of well, project specific best practices for how to configure individual projects and an easy way for um, users to come by and like visually comprehend um, how their infrastructure is, is configured. Um, Meshery as a project has been um, originally, you know, focused on service mesh um, management, multi mesh management and, and performance management for those but is an extensible platform for general infrastructure management. And um, one of the things that we've yearned to do is, well, is continue in that same vein in which the project was initially created, kind of in a similar way as to what you find with playwithdocker.com or playwithkubernetes.com, um, that people get the sandbox environment to, to learn and explore. And so that's the... That's the sort of the genesis of this particular initiative. And, and uh, as we go to, to socialize this with other projects, I figured we'd uh, raise it up here. So some, something for people to potentially familiarize it with a little bit. It's a, um, Meshery is a sandbox project. And so um, as we go to have a hosted version of, of Meshery running and, try to provide something of a safe environment in which people can learn about all of the um, individual CNCF projects. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it, so it sounds good, uh, Lee. Uh, I think we you can send an intro email to uh, the CNCF TOC, and then we can make sure that uh, it flows down to other, um, I mean, for, to the tags and the people not on the call and, and see how we can get the word out. Uh, is this running on CNCF infrastructure already? It's no, it's not. That's actually what I was in a roundabout way trying to get to right, right there at the end, which was, um, I don't know that that was, is afforded to sandbox projects or, or not, but. Um, we can think of something. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we can think of something. Drop something into service desk and we'll take care of you. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Equinix is very easy. Like uh, just in the last week, I was able to set up some stuff for one of the projects. So yeah. I, I we should be able to get get something together, especially if you want other projects to do more here. It would make sense for it to be, you know, not tied just to one sandbox project, but also, okay, yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, one question I had for you was I've been hearing um, fragments of conversations around like a CNI v two uh, uh, of you know the specification. Is the tag one That's of the places where we would be able to collect people together because it's happening all over the place. Like some stuff in container D, some in Kubernetes, uh, some in like a report called container networking. Uh, so I, I don't know if you want to like pull together people to say, hey, let's go do this uh, and let's see, especially because, you know, there's a lot of good people in this tag and they've done, they've seen it all before. 
so that that's why I'm uh, curious if it would be something that you would like to oh, consider yeah. on yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, actually, CNI was for for me specifically one of the first projects that I'd done diligence on, and so um, yeah, what a um, do, do you consider that the best place to initiate that conversation is with the CNI maintainers, and that they would know. Other, uh, well, yeah, just figure out where it is happening, right? At okay. this point, uh, and, and like figure out who's uh, talking about it, and let's see where it would naturally fall. Um, just because the people are uh, most of the people are coming from one place or the other. Um, Got you. Yep. We'll uh, we'll do. You'll. We'll, I'll um, gather some info. See if we can organize that. Present some of that info for you guys to. Figure out yeah, the best. Get the people together in a room. I, I don't care exactly where it uh, falls uh, specifically, but you know, as a leadership team, we should like, hey, let's you all should talk to each other, and uh, here is something to march towards. Yeah, um, the yeah, I, I, I like the idea of this like the playground, the sandbox, you know, environment for people to try out different projects, right? Uh, I think that's good, and the, if that's you know. Uh, that can take off, you know, I think a follow on what we, you know, uh, you can do is to publish, you know, some data on, you know, users experience of using, you know, uh, these different projects, right? So I think that information will be very useful for the end user to, you know, to know, yeah, to choose, you know, if for your service mesh, right? If there are multiple service mesh projects, what's his use and user experiences, yeah. Yeah, to regurgitate that briefly, like, yeah, not only is it for the service mesh projects, but just really, um, really any any workload or any project that runs on Kubernetes or, and basically all of the CNCF projects. But like, I think in part what Kathy, what you were saying is, yeah, the, the ability, it gives some of the projects a ven an, an alternative venue to promote best practices with their projects, if they're able to share some of those configuration best practices in a sandbox type environment. So as users come through to learn that they might do it in context of what the, the projects themselves are promoting or you know, suggesting in terms of the configuration of those projects. Yeah, right, right. Or that could, you know, um, see, you know, how the um, de developer velocity each project provides, right? Is the configuration simple or is it very complicated? I think those experience, those are good information for the you know, for the community to know. Okay, um, tag environmental sustainability. Uh, hello, so a few updates from the tag. We created two new working groups or we, um, so these are also the first working groups. The first one is uh, around communications with uh, the streams events survey, um, like in general com communication between like also different organizations and projects and so on. And then also we plan to do a website. Um, so for example, about the survey um, last year, end of last year, we created the survey. We plan to do this not like every month or so, but if, if it like makes sense. So maybe we have like a small team around events, a small team around survey and so on. So you will see how it goes, but this is like roughly the plan. Maybe this will also change. Maybe we create like new working groups or not. But this is like the starting point. Um, the second one is around tools and practices. For now, we do we plan to do a, like an addition to the current cloud native maturity model, or like do a separate one or do both. Um, so this is not hundred percent clear. We are at the moment in contact with the um, Green Software Foundation because they are also looking into the same direction and they have not yet something set up. So possible. So one possibility, and maybe this is like also like likely that we have both things. So we integrate with the cloud native maturity model and also contribute to the Green Software Foundation or just collaborate in, in that way. Um, um, about the landscape, so we've been work, working on collecting tools and like in general, like landscape stuff, organizations and so on for quite some time. It's like not yet finished. It's obviously 
it's also not yet finished for a first version, but we plan to release it or the first version to show it in KubeCon EU. And um, like the third stream in the second work, um, working group is around best practices. Um, so there's already a few best practices in the green software space, but they're not mapped to cloud native and not to the cloud space. They're like general to software engineering. So our idea was to basically frame this in the software space and uh, the cloud native space. And yeah, we are starting with these working groups. We plan to do a maybe bi-weekly meeting or something like this, see how it goes. And yeah, um, about the next topic, I already like briefly talked about the survey. So we correct, um, collected a few um, uh, like responses to the survey, and we are working on a like a presentation. Um, we are currently thinking about how to publicize this. It's not like finalized, but it looks looks interesting. So probably we will um write a blog post maybe if there's enough content maybe we can also do like a like a short webinar maybe 20 minutes or something like this to just to show the results um this is probably something that we will discuss next week in the meeting um right so the next one also about kubecon eu so our like idea currently is that we have like two milestones, like roughly two milestones. So KubeCon EU milestone and the KubeCon NA milestone, and that we have like a couple of uh, things that we want to like do in half a year, roughly. So for example, for KubeCon EU, we have a milestone where we want to like have a landscape document ready and uh, show or already like our first ideas about the maturity model. And we will have a discussion uh, tomorrow about um, the milestones itself and also like meetups, tag meetups, what we want to do, what went well, like in KubeCon NA last year and what we can improve and so on. And the next item is about project presentations. So we discussed in the tag meetings that we would like to have project meetings just to connect with the creators of these projects and also to introduce them to the CNCF and, and just to have this communication flowing. So we want to have like every month or maybe we also can increase this, but every month roughly a presentation, half an hour or something about some tool. Um, the first one would be Cube Green and the one after that is, would be Kepler. Um, there are a lot of tools so this this can take a while <laughs> and right so next one i'll let, I'll let is, you pause here yeah. we have one more group that i want to be able to make sure that we get to okay i i, I would keep it like short uh, in the last meeting one one uh, contributor um raised uh, raised the issue that we um would like to um in, like elaborate a little bit more in how to contribute to the tags or to the cncf from like a non-technical point of view. So if you don't know GitHub, if you don't know anything like this, so we we look into this um, and we agreed on an abbreviation because environmental sustainability is very long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember you had trouble trying to shorten it. Uh, so tag in me, yeah. I like, I like it. It, it rolls well. Uh, so thank you for that uh, update. Our last group tech contributor strategy, come on in. Okay, howdy. Um, <clears throat> so real quickly, um, we're analyzing the data from the CNCF contributor survey that we held late last year. Um, the, um, uh, the main goal that the tag had in running the survey was to find out what common blockers are for people um, uh, uh, trying to contribute to, to CNCF projects and, and maybe not being successful. Um, uh, so that we could provide advice um, to projects. Um, and when we have a report on that, you'll all get it. Um, the, um, uh, we have yet another mentorship uh, cycle. CNCF is um, in planning and enrolling in Google Summer of Code, um, which means any CNCF project would be 
eligible to propose a project uh, for it. Um, and the next LFX cohort um, is now accepting mentee applications. Um, there's uh, 55 different proposals across the CNCF projects for things for mentees to work on. Um, so if anybody is connected, particularly with universities, um, please share out that information, uh, which you can get from our mentorship repo. Um, I, uh, we already proposed this to the TOC, adding governance review as part of graduation. Um, and uh, you all said, yeah, that sounds like a good idea and immediately gave us two projects. So we're working on that. And one of the things that we'll get out of that is we're gonna create a template for how the governance review should run. Um, and in the meantime, we're working with both uh, Cilium and Kata um, on, on governance improvements. Um, the, um, uh, and we have restarted because of um, a new member of the tag. Um, we have restarted maintainer serve. Um, so um, again, please share this uh, with any maintainers that you work with. Uh, we're gonna have one on February 13th on managing non-code contributors. Um, for your project, um, because we find that a lot of projects are missing out um, on a very good source of contributors uh, because they don't have specific programs for non-code contributors. Um, uh, and we're also planning on trying to have a an in-person maintainer circle in Amsterdam space permitting. Um, the, um, so, uh, but please share that first one um, uh, with anybody you know, and you'll see a follow up on the mailing list. That uh, is perfect. Thank you. Sounds good, Josh. Uh, I'm so happy seeing the mentoring working group uh, launched, and I, you know, I, I hope uh, folks are coming to help out there as well. So uh, we can always use more. Um, yeah. At at this point, like a lot of other tags, the limitation of our tag is. Um, we need more volunteers, more people involved to do more things. Okay, got it. The um, uh, yeah, I always spread the word out for you, Josh. So yeah, <laughs> yep. And and also technically, I should be grooming my own successor because I've been tag chair since we founded the tag, which is a little bit longer than we really want the CNCF. Um, yeah, but but first, it's going on the list people. for this year. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, that's wonderful. Yeah. And other other questions. Are we doing like a press push for more people for the mentoring side? Or have, or have we got a mechanism for that? Yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, just to call out Josh, thank you again for calling this out because again, as projects, uh, even Otel is not aware of this. Uh, so uh, this GSOC push, so that would be useful to communicate to the projects. If we can help in any way, you know, I can, and you can point me to some, material we can gladly you know remind different projects um but it's also that outreachy for example is also accepting applications again maybe having a more comprehensive mentoring list may be useful because we uh, yeah, you know again, well, l participates a fair bit in outreachy also yeah so um one of the things we're doing is actually doing some reorganizing um the cncf has a new beta tool called clotributor um, mm -hmm. which lists help wanted issues across all projects. Um, and we're looking to incorporate that, which would give us a better and sort of continuous pipeline into projects creating mentorship opportunities, um, which is currently the really time consuming and slow part of the process for all of the mentorship programs. Um, the, um, and uh, once we get that working, it'll become a lot easier to just participate into whatever program Mm -hmm. currently mm -hmm. has a cycle yeah awesome awesome yeah. but uh, um, again i i think uh, i i'd love to understand more so that we can yeah. actually get more involved but um, oh cool uh, okay thank you again josh uh, josh let's send one out, one message out uh, about you know the next cohort for the lfx at least okay so, to the toc mailing list okay we'll do okay that's perfect thank you Awesome. Right. Yeah, exactly on time. <laughs> exactly on time. Um, we've got a couple of projects in voting. I was hoping to be able to check in with Ricardo on being able to move over Key Cloak. Uh, any other updates around projects that have not? Uh, I think Fasila had a question on the meeting chat asking about uh, 
Oh, which one was this? Istio. Istio. Um, yeah, projects waiting on sponsors are over on the meeting minutes doc. They are not included here. Um, right. But that's where we're, we're, we currently are on the sponsor pieces. So. All right. No one's putting their hand up to want to be able to talk about like further projects in here. Um, we will be convening on the 21st with tag chairs and the uh, TOC together. So. I expect like lots of fun in that one. I'll need to yep. bring your issues. Thank you. Bye everyone. Thank you so much for your time right. today. See you all. Thank you. Bye.